their work with me. And then after that, I would talk to the audience members about their work and their creative process. The idea was not to talk about myself and my work, but about the, the work of the audience, whatever you guys are up to and help in any way I can to encourage you along on your uh, mostly creative journeys. But sometimes people come in and they're not doing creative stuff. They're just trying to get through the day as parents or as accountants or what have you. We welcome it all. We're here to help all, everybody. Um, and um, what we do is we work together for 20 minutes and then we take uh, questions for the remainder of the hour. And uh, I want to thank the Public Theater for their support over these 11 years and more recently Hal Round who came on about what, three years ago, four years ago, five years ago, uh, to help us live stream. And when we were doing it in the lobby of the Public Theater, and now, of course, they have helped together, working together to create this beautiful community that we have here. So uh, Audrey's going to tell you how to get in touch. Did you have a question after our work time? Go, Audrey. Thanks, SLP. Um, so if you have a question and you're inside of the Zoom, all you need to do is click on the participant tab at the bottom of your screen. There will be a raise your hand button in there. It's on the bottom of your screen if it's on a laptop or the top if you're on an iPad or a tablet. And if you're watching on HowlRound.tv, you can ask us questions by tweeting at WatchMeWorkSLP with the hashtag HowlRound, H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D, uh, or you can tweet at, at Public Theater NY, or you can uh, write into our Instagram messages. And those are the ways. Those are the ways. These are the days. These are the days that oh, we will look back upon and go, wow. So um, with that in mind and many other things, I'm sure, let us get to work. <clears throat>
Right. Right, there it is, 20 minutes. Um, yeah, ready to talk with you about your work, your creative process, or your, or the weather. Or the weather, all good options. We've got some questions. All right, um, okay. Yeah, Laura, you are up first. Are you there? Oh. And you should get a, a flash saying, I'm asking you to unmute. Is it there? Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> I um, thank you for these sessions. This is really becoming therapy for me. You know, I, um, I heard your interview on BBC. Ah. It was so great. I hope your mother heard it too. <laughs> you know? um, I, I had been wanting to try to get in touch with you. I'm an idiot with techno stuff. So I'm like old school. I'm a senior citizen. So you kept on saying James Baldwin and I felt like this is a sign. I knew David, his brother, very well. Mm. And David, because David worked at McKell's and Pat McKell got me in the music business a million years ago. Right on. You know, so it was like the craziest. James used to come in and we used to call him Jimmy. Okay, so that was, I can't wait. I wish I could call like Skip, you know, uh, Henry Louis Gates Skip, but I can't. So I have Jimmy at least. <laughs> well. He used to come in and um, Maya Angelou came in and Tony Morrison and everybody. It was great. My mentor is Yuri Kochiyama. She was good friends with Malcolm X. So between I saw all the like writers and political people, then I got a chance. I worked in R&B. So I worked with Ashford and Simpson and Stevie Wonder and everybody. Anyway, big deal, <laughs> whatever, you know. But I am a race junkie, and I actually i am doing trying to do stand up, but right now I can't find the funny. I mean, this is, I love the protests. I can't even do the protests because I'm a senior, I'm in a category where I can't go out and protest. But how do you get yourself motivated again to just, when you find the block? When you how do I, how do, how does one get motivated when she finds the block, you said? Yeah, like right now I can't find the funny, like, like the protest is, is seeping into my head and everything. And, and I feel like, you know, we're, it, it's just whatever. I don't know if my, my husband just got tested today for, for the virus and it's freaking me out. So oh. nothing is funny anymore. I can't, you know. So how do you write, how do you get back into your work when? That's a great question. When the world is too much with us, they might say, you know, um, which is a line from uh, somebody's poem. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's Wordsworth. Um, but um, when, the, when we feel the pressures of the world and they, it, it makes it difficult to, to not only engage with the world in some fashion, but to also get even a little bit of our work done every day, which keeps our courage up which keeps like this encouraging thing going on in, in us, um, which is why one of the reasons why I think it's really important to focus on your work even a little bit every day. Um, I would say, uh, Laura, if you ordinarily do stand up and you can't find the funny, then do stand up that's not funny. You know, I mean, I, I don't know the rules of stand up. I don't do stand up. I stand up. <laughs> <laughs> I up a couple hours ago in a meeting. Lord have mercy. But um, <laughs> it, 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 it's some, you know, stand up doesn't have to be funny. Dave Chappelle, you know, put out um, you know, a, a new program. Uh, you know, stand up does not have to be funny. Stand up, you know, like uh, in, in church where you, you know, you're a witness. So, Laura, if you can't find the funny, that's okay. Uh, use what you're finding. You know, whatever it is that you're finding, you, you just have to stand up and, and do, you know, performative talking to people to hip them to what you know. Because what's great about your situation, Laura, is you have this wonderful, I mean, we all have a history if we're here, right? We all have something, we all have a backstory. Your backstory is very rich and beautiful. And you're a senior, you, you, it's, it's not as smart to get out there right now because uh, COVID is a, is, is a real difficult and scary thing for everybody, but especially people who are seniors, right? 
so um, or compromised in some in some other I mean some fashion not that seniors are compromised but I would <laughs> mind you know listen to your gut on that point but really find a way to do your work um, you know performance poetry you can tell us the truth as you see it Laura um, it don't it doesn't have to make us laugh and go ha 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 and want to buy another drink and leave the the venue you know going yay hooray it can make us it can break our hearts I bet you can. Um, I would tell the truth, Laura, as you see it right now. I would love to hear it and then put it on Zoom, have a Zoom show, you know, and we'll all, I'll tune in. I'll, <laughs> Thank, you know, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Crystal. Crystal. Hi. Hi. <laughs> oh, my friend. How are How you? Are you? Are you still in New Jersey? I am so in Jersey, I can't get out. <laughs> How are you feeling? Well, um, there's there's definitely some chaos and some family drama that we're dealing with, um, but God is good anyway. We're 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 getting through. We're getting through. Um, you were right. You were very very right about. Um, working on one thing and putting my hand on the play that I couldn't get ideas for, The Father Chronicles. Um, I now have about five or six ideas that, to add on to it. So yeah. I yeah. thank yeah. you so much for that. Yeah. Um, yeah. That is um, helping me with my process of grieving, like I was telling you before. Um, my question is actually regarding now I have a problem with this play, <laughs> the demagogue play. Um, because the first draft that I gave in, um, I was asked not to make her so um, accurate, to fictionalize her a mm. lot, and to make her, um, to, to make her, I just, I guess, create a scenario where she's just kind of just human and has to face her, um, that point where she, I guess, becomes the demagogue and kind of says, go, um, um, instead of, I'm saying they're supposed to be like an, an, um, an antagonist who's supposed to challenge her agenda and she's supposed to go over and do it. So now I'm having trouble with all the research that I've been doing to f fantasize her, to, to make her more fictional um, I'm having a really hard time with that. Um, any thoughts? Yeah, yeah, that's a that's that's a thorny one. So she is an historical character. I, yeah, I'm having read the, the she's an historical character. You've done a lot of research. Um, is she in the way past? I mean, I just she, she's she, still alive. She's she's still alive. So yeah, very old. About, yeah, the tricky thing about writing about someone who's still alive is is that there's a whole do you have the right, the legal rights to write about about her story? I, I, I'm just asking. I don't, I don't think, oh. no, oh, oh, no. Oh. Okay, so that's two reasons why, you know, your producers might say, you know, fictionalize. You know what I mean? Okay. So, so, so you're not writing about her, a living person who has the rights, I, I think, in some fashion to her life story. You know what I mean? And can't have mm -hmm. somebody pick it up and do whatever they want with it, say whatever they want about her. I think there's so so your your best bet I think is to fictionalize, step away from her character and use her character as a model or a template on which you will create uh, this beautiful beautiful story. Um, it sounds like also you've done some a lot of research and you haven't you you you're you're very versed in the facts of the life of your character, but it sounds like what you might be missing is the dramatic context. Yes. You see what I mean? So you've got yes. the facts. And if we just told our lives as they unfolded every day, if you think of, okay, so tell me the story of your day. Well, I got up, I went to breakfast, da 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 da, -da. Historically accurate, but perhaps not as dramatic as you'd like it to be if you're writing a play, a screenplay, or a teleplay. Right. Right? So you right. have to create, so we're not doing the pageant of history we're doing drama, which is why they mention things like antagonist. You know, so mm -hmm. your, your main character, uh, this, this fictional character based on perhaps 
this historical figure and perhaps a couple other historical figures. You can get a richer character that way, perhaps. Mm -hmm. She wants something very much, and in her way stands a person or a collection of people or an institution. Does, does that make sense? That's, that's creating a dramatic, that's creating drama. Yeah. And so yeah. she has choices and maneuver um, herself and her situation in order to hopefully achieve her goal at the end. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Um, so it's basically creating a series of, of choices and obstacles and getting through them. Mm -hmm. And even, even if it's not right on the nail factual. Better, sounds like better that it's not. Sounds better. like, from what you're saying. Sounds like, why don't you make up some stuff? Make it up. Because we're talking about a, a real person, and it's not your, like you're writing a play about Abraham Lincoln. You know what I'm saying? You're writing right. a play about someone who is still on this earth with us. Okay. And 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 needs to be uh, respected. That's my guess. That's yeah. That's my guess, but I'm not sure lawyers would know better. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. Thank okay. you. Thanks, Thanks Chris. Good. No problem. Nice to see you. Same here. Um, all right. Up next, we've got Marta. Marta, are you there? Hi. Sorry, I just had it. Hi. Thank you. I just had a technical problem at the worst possible time. Um, thank you for doing this. I've actually been watching for weeks, many, many weeks, and it's my first time asking. So um, thank you. It's already changed so much about my work. And um, anyway, um, my question is um, about quote unquote shitty first drafts. Um, just how messy can they be? Like, because I've been so basically, <laughs> um, I've been working on my novel for about a year and um, I was careful not to be a perfectionist, I thought. Um, and like, I was pretty gentle. Um, throughout but then I've had a couple of like I think I knew I knew what I thought the story was from the beginning um, and somehow I've spent a year not getting there yet mm -hmm. and I think because I kept getting distracted by what I now think might be a backstory I don't I don't know yet because I haven't gotten to the bit that I think is the story uh, and um, but I just kept, yeah, I just kept kind of thinking it starts, it starts kind of with a breakup, let's say. So I just kind of thought I had to explain like the whole relationship and everything that came before um, to the point that I thought that was the novel after a while. And um, so I've tried to get myself to just get to the end a couple of times to just do like three months of for, you know, just however it comes out, not looking back. Um, but I, I was meant to do that in March, and we all know what happened in March. And then here we are, um, and I'm trying to get to the end again, but um, because I really need a break this summer, and I have other stuff to tend to, and like I've put quite a lot of things on hold for this, and I've just got really tired of this project. And it's a shame, because like, I think it was Tony Kushner who said, it's so different in our head than it will be than it is when we put it on the page, and so I've psyched myself out in my head, but I still don't know, like if what I think the story will become is what it will become. So um, I'm like terrified of um, taking a break without it being, you know, in my drawer as I had planned. But I don't, but I don't want to like drag it through the summer and find that I'm still here in September, like in the same note taking you know because I don't write super linearly so I just have a million notes mm -hmm. and I'm just like hitting diminishing returns in a way mm -hmm. and I think if I can just get to the stuff you know to to tell it in however messy way I can like I can do it quite quickly and put it away but yeah just how how is it okay to have a first draft with a ton of holes and like a ton of you know, questions and things that don't get resolved 
in this first draft or if you have any guidance about this, I'll be very great. I, I love your question because you're really walking us through your creative process and inviting us in, which is very courageous and, and generous. And, and we, I'll speak for myself, see parts of our creative pro processes is that the plural um, in your, you know, like, like I'm, I'm thinking, whoa, I've been there. I've been there. Whoa, I have been there. You know what I mean? So, so I, I, I think Marta, um, I am going to give you, well, first of all, here's a question. How many pages till the end? I don't know, but I have, I don't till the know. End, till the end. Um, the end. Yeah, let's say, uh, I, let's say 70, 100. 70, 100, okay, okay. So if you say, I really need a break this summer. I mean, what I'm doing is I'm taking it out of the kind mm -hmm. of emotional, you know, whoa part, and I'm, we're just doing, gonna do math for a minute, you know what I'm saying? So 70 pages, right? Yeah, something like that, okay? Okay, um, so when you say you, you, you need to take a break this summer, when does summer officially begin for you? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like in three days, isn't it? Um, I'm, so I decided July, um, because yeah, I just have other projects that I have to sure. deal with and, and COVID has appended everything. Yeah, yeah, so July. Sure, so July, July 1st. Yeah, or, you know, yeah, what? that's what I thought, yeah. Or. Okay, and, and do you or it know, can be like the second week, you know. Second week of July, so July fifteenth, July, yeah, July eighteenth, July twentieth. <laughs> so so well, I'm just saying, you, you, you're going to give yourself a month to to slap down these pages. Yeah. You, then you still have I like could. a month and a half of summer. Yeah, yeah, which is all their other work, but yeah, 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 yeah. I could do that. We're, we're all, you know, right. I, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm right with you on that one. Too many, so yeah, many yeah, problems yeah, yeah. for a little time. Okay, so um, I would suggest that number one, you have permission to write a really, really shitty draft, really vomit draft. You have permission. You have total permission. I mean, all the prizes and accolades and honors and PhDs, honorary. I won. I confer. I say. I give you permission. <laughs> Write a really, really, really shitty draft, and I challenge you: write a shittier draft than I have. Ha ha! <laughs> I've written, I've written, I've written, I've, I've written some shitty, shitty drafts. I've written some really, really shitty, shitty, awful. Oh my God! Uh, you know they don't see the light of they don't. I don't show them around to my friends. I they're they're what I rewrite, right? Okay, so you have permission, right? To to to. Basically, you have permission to get your work done however you can. Now, here we go. The very specifics, you have 100 pages or 70 pages, and you have, say, a month, right? Now, that mean, that doesn't mean you have to write actually 70 pages. Here's where it gets fun. One page can be a post-it stuck onto an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. In this chapter, or 20 pages can be a post-it. In this chapter, this chapter is going to be about such and such and this and that. I don't know how to get there, but this is what I want. Boom, that could be 10 pages. You see what I mean? It could yeah. be a collection of just post-its on pages. You might write a total of 20 pages and the rest of them might be just post-its tacked on to eight and a half by 11 pieces of paper. I really want to write a scene or a play, uh, a, a, a scene or, you know, in a novel. I really want to write a chapter about this. So the first part of the chapter is going to be about this. And the second part is this. I know three lines of dialogue that the character says while she's on the divan drinking. A <laughs> you know, she says, you know, sure, I blow her. I don't know what, you know. What I mean? <laughs> um, yeah. You know, whatever she says. Yeah. And, but the rest Thank of her, you. you know, you know what I'm saying? You have yep. permission to do that. Get to the end because... I think that's going to be the most helpful thing for you. Get Thank to the you. In some fashion, okay? Then you okay. can put it in a drawer, and when you come back to it, it's going to be jumbly, you know. And then you'll you'll rouse your courage, or rouse yourself, and gird your loins, and go into the rewriting mode. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. That's really really helpful. Please, please, please get to the yeah. end, okay? Please. please. I will. I will. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, up next we've got Shakara. 
There you go. Are you there? Shikara? Hi, I'm here. Um, my, it's pronounced Shikara. Sorry. But, I know it's, it's, I understand. Reading it is, is different than, I guess. Um, well, this is my first time here and this is really awesome. Um, thank you for doing this. I'm honored to kind of meet you. Um, so my, my issue um, as a playwright, um, that, that side of the writing version of myself, um, I have a lot of trouble with subtext. Hmm. Um, and I want to know how do you let the story kind of tell the message of the play instead of like letting the characters kind of like just say it? Because that's I I, um, I write in a way that um, all the monologues in my in my work is like kind of like poemy, um, so people are pretty direct with um, with how they're feeling, and mm -hmm. I don't necessarily want to dial that back, but I just want to know what what would be your um, advice for that? Yeah, um, that's a great question. I'm and. I'm, I'm practicing saying your name too, Shakara, like Irene Kara. Uh, Shakara, like Kara, like Irene Kara. Yes, <laughs> like Care Bear. <laughs> oh, like Care Bear. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, Shakara. Okay, um, that's a great. That's a really great question. Um, and it sounds like sounds like your writing is very exciting and beautiful and and passionate and very like on point and interesting. Um, I think. M do you have, so you say you're, it's poemy. Do you have characters in your, would you say they're characters? I do, um, yes. They have, they're, there's, um, there's characters and there's um, a kind of a fluent, there's always a fluent story. Oh, great. But I just, um, I, I just feel like I'm just like a little, I'm a little too on, like I'm a little too um, direct. Mm -hmm. And I want to, um, let the events that happen kind of like tell bring the the message about more so than mm -hmm. the, I feel like I spell it out for the audience too much mm -hmm. yeah it's tricky because when we spell the message out for the audience too much then there's only one message you know what I mean right when we allow our characters to desire things and try to get them then there are many messages mm -hmm. I mean I think of like you know fences or for colored girls or um, no place to be somebody or Hamlet or King Lear or top, uh, I almost said top dogs, top girls, you know, mm -hmm. um, there are many things going on. There are many messages, right? Yeah. Uh, because I believe those plays are based in character to, to my mind, the way I read them, you know, a scholar uh, might say something different. Mm -hmm. But when I read them, I think of the characters. I think of Lady in Blue and what she wants. You know what I'm saying? Right, yes. Boy and what he wants. I think of Hamlet and what he wants. You know right. What I'm and so I, I'm, I'm an actor, so oh, I, okay. I do kind of, um, I think everything is, it's based in like, there's a lot of character work that goes around like my writing. I just, I don't know. I don't even know how else to like, just to, to describe what, um, what I think I'm I'm missing to like take myself to like the next level in my writing. I, I think sh I think your your characters, if you could really focus on what they want, not what they're okay. thinking about, not what they want to tell somebody, but what they want. Um, okay. I, I'm thinking of one of my play in the blood, Hester La Negrita. She wants a better life for herself and her children. Okay, now. That's not, I wouldn't say, the message of the play. I don't know. I don't know. You know, there are many messages. Right. But that's what she wants. She wants it very much more than anything. She'll do anything to get it. Right. Right. So, so that, and that's very different, I believe, from the message of the play. Okay. Um, so just get grounded, like go sink down. You're an actor. You know how to do this. Sink down out of the world of thoughts into the world of the feelings what is what does my character want what does she want more than anything and then you'll start having the character speak from there which will be in line with the theme or the issues as it were but not on the on the nose on the nose 
<laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so and much. Come back. come back and hang out. It's a fun place to be. Yeah. I would love to. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Shakira. Um, all right. Uh, we've got about 12 minutes left and we've got Wendell up next. Wendell, are you there? Uh, yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi. Hi. Uh, hello. Uh, I, I just learned about this uh, last night. I'm so honored to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Um, and since I have you here, I would love to say that in 2017, I was going through depression. And at the time, I didn't realize it. But your 365 days uh, inspired me to just write every single day. Uh, yeah, social media, just to be accountable so people can see that I was working through it. And uh, it helped a lot. So I, I really just, I want to say that before anything else. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so, I'm so glad but, here. I'm so, and I appreciate hearing that, man. Really appreciate it. No, thank you. Uh, the question that I have, I, I spent the last 10 years in Asia uh, working as an actor, director, uh, writing, and to try to process my feelings of all of the, our killings uh, by the police, I wrote a play and used narratives from uh, former slaves. And at the time, I was, I was really angry, but I knew my audience being mostly uh, J Japanese. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't think that anger would translate, so I tried to make it a little bit more educational, a little more... Um, uh, not indirect, but a, a little more open. Now in 2020, I am just angry, like that's it. And I want to write about it, but I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about like how much when you write, how much do you think about your own anger and feelings and how much of that do you feel comes across in your writing? Because I, I, I don't want to alienate or, or turn off anyone, but I do want to express it. Wow, wow, that's a great question, Wendell. Um... I, uh, I have, when I write, I have both eyes on the work. Now, I, th I think you're very smart. You're, you're writing, you're in Japan, right? Um, At the moment, New York. No, I mean, I mean, you're, uh, several years ago, right? Yes, you're yes, yes, yes. In Japan, and you're, as you're writing, you are aware of the audience that you're, they're talking to. Um, I think that that's a good move. Um, today, I think uh, it, it is a time for anger, but it's also a time for like, you know, I don't know, it, it, they, they say that, you know, you, like an NBA player, you know, or WNBA player, she's got to play, she can't just play hot, she's got to play smart, right? Mm -hmm. So you get, you get out there on the court or, or whatever you're doing, you know, we got to play hot and we, but not just hot, we got to play smart because there, there's a goal and we, if we want to, if we want to just blow and tell the world how angry we are, I actually believe that that's okay, right? If that's what your play is, just expressing anger and you alienate some people because of that, well, right now I would say blow. You know, if you got, because you have a, because other, I feel like if we say, well, think about your audience and you don't want to alienate people and you want to make it marketable, Right? You want to, I believe that we'd be encouraged, uh, that I would be encouraging you to perhaps keep some of that pain and anger down, you know, eat your pain. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, I don't think that's healthy, uh, especially right now. So I'm encouraging you to, to, to run the energy. Um, but also you got to play, you can't just play hot, you play, I mean, really like play like WNBA, NBA, or like make a play, right? Mm -hmm. You got to play smart. And if you want to uh, just tell people how angry you are, that's one thing. If you want to affect positive change, you got to play smart and you got to have, I always have both eyes on the work. I don't think about the audience too much because I am the audience. Wow. Wow. Right? Wow. <laughs> so simple, but it makes so much sense. Yeah. I'm going to stop. That's, That's good. That's good. That was That's excellent. Good. Thank you so that much. That is perfect. <laughs> Succinct. We got it. Wait, I'm going to lean back now. Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, Wendell. Thank you both so much for this. <laughs> Um, all right, up next we've got Karima. Are you there? Oh. 
Hi, can you hear me? Hi, yeah. Hi. Okay. Hi. 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 Um, I, I'm the piece. I'm almost done with my the piece. Not a whole lot of pages, but I have to let her ride how it's riding, right? My question is this. My characters start off very like, at the beginning is light, is very light. There's nothing heavy really going on because they're meeting together as a book club, as a book club, they kind of come together. But throughout the interaction, something, a subject happens that changes everything, right? And I'm finding that I have two protagonists and I'm wondering, I think more so, mm, can you have two <laughs> protagonists in the play? Cause they both like, Ooh, they're both, it's like, I think the issue is more of what they're fighting against that each person is holding. So I'm just wondering, can you do that? <laughs> I would, no, I would say yes. I mean, okay. I, I'm, I'm saying yes. Um, you're, you're, you've got your first draft already? You're almost I'm almost done I'm I would say done. yeah I'd say right now you're almost to the finish line yes. I would say now is not the time to stop but you know what I mean and go what wait, wait a minute I got too many protagonists you know keep marching to the finish line right okay I, and then when you reread it go hmm, you know is this flowing like I want it to flow you know what I mean okay. To what you know what I mean? So let's get you to the finish line first. Do exactly what you're doing. I think what you're doing is right for right now. Okay. And the answer is you can have, I suppose you can have as many protagonists as you need, but at some point, perhaps you would want to, after you finished it, you would want to take another look at it and ask that question again. Yeah, because I think what it is, honestly, the person who's trying to take over, I don't want them to take over. <laughs> okay. Because in my mind, who I wanted to be the person that's driving it more is in the, the other person seems like it's trying to drive it. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I'm like, this is not how I had it planned. So it's like, it's kind of, or mm -hmm. I'll just, you know, I'll go ahead and just finish it. I just hope when I rewrite, I'm not starting with one paragraph. <laughs> No, no, no. I think I think when you get to the finish line and then you rewrite, it's going to be a process of trimming and shaping and elongating. You're okay. going to be building on what you've got. Okay. If, if we stop now and, and look under the engine and start tinkering with it, I think that'll slow you down. Keep okay. going. You sounds like you're in a great flow. You get to the finish line and then we start looking at it and making it longer if you want it to be longer. Or Yeah, I do want it to be longer, but I didn't want to force. You know, I just tr was trying to let, a, let the the voices go and not try to force it. And hopefully when I go back, I hope, hopefully I can open it up uh -huh. that it can be longer. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Katima. Karima, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Um, all right, we've got about four minutes left. We got a question from Essence. Hi there, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Okay, welcome. Um, thank you. So. Uh, it is my first time in this class today. I actually discovered it earlier this morning, which is amazing. Um, and I'm actually pretty early on into my uh, writing journey. I just graduated about a year ago and um, I wrote a play about my grandmother for my senior thesis. And I actually haven't touched it until today, um, until then. But I, like Shakira, I come from an acting background, but um, I, my program was based in devised theater and collaboration. And my biggest issue has been when I started writing it and now where I can't get myself to, to start getting on a computer or getting my pen to paper is that I went from being able to play on my feet with an ensemble of people and playing improv games 
to get all the content to page and then going, that was the first step of my creative process. And now I'm struggling to find that play now that I'm doing it on my own. And I was wondering how, how can I get that back or different methods or exercises that are helpful for someone who's so used to being more improv based? That's a great question, Essence. And it's not that, I'm guessing, it's not that you, you wouldn't get with some friends and do some improv uh, online. That's not what you're interested in doing. Is that correct? Not right, no, no. The work is a little more personal to me. So um, I wanna get into the, the, pro the habit of doing it on my own. Great. Um, do you have any uh, puppets? I don't, but I have socks. <laughs> there you go. Girl, see, look at that. <laughs> She's thinking. She's creative. There you go. Okay, so you get some socks. You know where I'm going with this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get like yeah. Some, if you have different color socks or, you know, that yeah. can be like, Oh, I think this. Oh, I think this. Oh, over here. She's thinking this. Is she gonna do yeah. That? Right? Get some socks. Okay. You know? And get your imaginary friendship network going. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And that's socks are better than puppets. <laughs> yeah. Okay, awesome. It'd be fun, right? And silly. Yeah. It's silly. And maybe when you write or work on your writing, stand up, you know? Yeah, get on my feet and get around the room feet, too. Right? Start playing, move your body. Sounds like you're a writer who, who, who really, it comes out of your body. Remember language is yeah. activity, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And, and don't mind if you look a little silly. See, I'm doing yeah. it. No silly. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> right. Well, it's so nice to meet you, Essence. It's it's six o'clock. Six o'clock. Everybody grab your socks. Go get your socks, quick. I know. <laughs> it's really great. It's it's what a what a wonderful thing you you've hipped us to, Essence. This is great. Yeah. Well, we'll be back next week. Um, the links will be released, I believe, tomorrow before uh, I think at two o'clock now. Oh. Uh, for next week. I know we change an hour different. Amazing. Awesome. Eastern time. Awesome. All right. So we'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all. Thank you, SLP. You're the best. Love you. Love you. Thanks, Audrey. Thank you.